I'm going to start with table formatting, and here I have a blank case view document that's part of a file with mapped data. For my example, I'm going to create a generic current asset section that will be dynamically linked by map number. Now please note that although my focus is on a current asset section, the same properties I am demonstrating can be applied to any table you wish to create. And you can see that I've already got a control cell built into this particular document, so I'm going to jump right into the table formatting. I'm going to create a new table here, and I'll just call it current assets 1, CA1 if you don't mind. Now when we're building tables, it's important to plan the table out. Now I happen to know that I want a description and a current and prior year column, but I'm going to drive that by mapping number, so I'm going to go to a fourth column. My mapping number is not actually a map number, it's a alphanumeric item, so I'll make that an alphanumeric cell column. Then my descriptions do vary in length, and I'll make that a variable with alphanumeric cell. For my numeric columns, it makes it very easy, I just choose numeric cell column. Now, I always choose a cell when I'm building tables in the columns. It's easier to delete cells than it is to have to reinsert them after the fact. Now, in a current asset section, I also have to consider the number of rows. Now, I'm not going to attempt to guess how many line items my client is going to have because different clients have different numbers of line items. Instead, what I want to do is specify the number of unique rows. So I'm going to have the dates, I'm going to have the title, assets, the subtitle current assets, a line item row, and a subtotal row. And I'll just click OK, and this table starts to build for me. Now, when I first introduce the table, it's going to equally space the columns across the page. So I want to go back into my table properties and make some changes to this. For example, for columns three and four, I don't want those to auto fit across the page. I want my cells to be approximately one inch. And so with the left side and right side spacing, a width of 1.1 will accommodate a one inch cell. Now my margin here is 7.1 inches, so if I use 2.2 on the last two columns, that leaves me with 4.9 for my description column. Of course, I do have the first column here, which is going to be my map number column. I believe one inch will suffice, but I want to skip that column. So I'm going to put a one in there, which is always skip, and a high condition that's going to tie to one of the uh, command icons on my toolbar in the form mode. So get height equals two, we're going to see how that comes into play a little bit later to make that go away when we don't want to see it. Now when I hide a column, I want to assign the width perhaps to one of the other columns or to all the other columns or just shrink the table. Because I'm never really going to use that column in any printing, I'll shrink the table for that. Now for column two, the description column, I don't want to hide that. For column three, the current year column, I don't want to hide that. But for column four, which is the comparative column, I may want to hide that if I have a single year statement. So as you can see, I've got a cell called single up top here, and I'm going to put in a calculation. If single is equal to one, then I want it to skip. And also, if single is equal to one and get hide is equal to two, I want that to hide as well. Now, when this column goes away, I want to ensure that the column three is pushed out to my right-hand margin. So what I'll do is I'll add the width of column four to column two when column four is skipped. That will increase the width of column two, the description column, pushing column three out to the margin. Also, on my row properties, I want to make sure that if I have zero balances in non-skipped columns, that I skip that row. And for my hide action, I can say hide of show button is not pressed, which is the exact same as saying get hide, open close parenthesis, equals two. Now, I also have to consider my alignment. And when I'm lining up my descriptions with my balances, I like to align the bottom of my description with my amount. And that's being applied to the entire table. I'm not using any borders or shading on that, so I'll just click OK, and see what we've got so far. So that's coming along nicely. I know that I won't need these two because this is the date row, and I know that I won't need these four because those are the description rows. For this particular description, what I want to do is I want to merge these columns together, and I'll just go up to table and select merge squares to do so, and center the title. Because I've changed the formatting on the paragraph, what I'll do is I'll just add a new style called title, and click OK. Now, 
There's a couple other things I want to do here, and I'm going to start off with the col first column. These cells, I'm going to format those cells to make them input cells, because I'm going to be inputting map numbers to those a little bit later. Also, for all of these cells that have been selected, what I want to do is format those cells to ensure that they will accept the underlying space. Now, that means the text of the description will line up with the number text. And I'll just click OK there. Now, the two cells in the upper right-hand corner are going to be date cells. So highlighting those cells, I'm going to format the cell. And I'm going to change it to an alphanumeric cell, making sure that they are column width. And I'm going to go down to the alignment and center the alignment on those. Clicking OK sets that up for me. Now, the other thing I want to do also in the cell is go back to the general tab and include the calculation. So I want to extract the year from the client profile field 13, which is the year end date field. Now, that's going to give me the same value in both of those cells, but I'll just go into the prior year cell, and in the calculation toolbar, I'll select minus 1 to change that to the prior year. Now, what I'd like to do the next step is link my data. So using the tool menu, I'll access the linkage tool, and I'll just extend this out here so we can see it a little bit more and resize the columns. So on the cache line, I'm going to put the extended description for my cache in there. And I'm also going to link my current year value and my prior year value by clicking on the cell and clicking on the plus or minus sign. Now, at this point, I don't need the linkage tool anymore. So I'm going to close that. And return back to the calculation field, starting with my cache calculation. Right now, it's hard-coded to map number 111. If I copy that row down, all of them will be linked to cache. So instead, what I'm going to do is replace this with a relative column calculation. Now, the relative column calculation, in case you use RC, and the minus 1 indicates move one row to the left. Now, the pound sign inside the brackets indicates to renumber that uh, value in the event that somebody inserts a column between those two items. I'm going to do the same thing for the numbers, but this time the relative column calculation will be minus 2 for the current year, because I'm going back two columns to the left. And for the prior year, it will be minus 3. Now notice each time I do this, I am putting the pound sign in there so that it will renumber the uh, columns for me, renumber the reference for me in the event additional columns are added. Now. For my totals, I'm also going to use a relative reference in my total. And I'll use the calculation editor to pull that up. Now, the calculation editor provides me with all the calculations that are available. And the one that I want is a relative row calculation. So I'm looking at relative row, and I want a total there. So it's looking for two parameters. And the first one is going to be minus 1 pound, which is going to renumber from the first and the second one is just going to be minus one. So it's one row above, which will renumber when I insert more rows, and one row above, which will stay the same. Now, the nice thing about this calculation is that I can use it in both the current year and the prior year columns. And I'll just put it in like that. Now, at this point, I should be all set to duplicate my row information for my line item. So I'm going to just go up to Table, select Insert Rows. And I want to insert after the current row and copy the contents. And I'll add 15 rows here. Oh. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Now, all of these rows have the description calculation associated with them. But I did miss two. I missed the first description. And I missed the second description. And I also missed the third description down here. Now, it appears to me. I need to do some formatting as well. So for this row, this, this paragraph, this is a line item, and I'm going to indent it and wrap around just in case. So that will be my line item.
And I'll just apply the line item style to all the other line item lines. Now, if I had done that first, when I copied them down, that would have automatically been managed, and I wouldn't have had to do that after the fact. I also want to adjust the subtotal. So I'm going to indent that a little bit and indent the bottom part and then just move it in a little bit more than the line items. On top of that, I'm going to format the paragraph so that there's a little bit of space before that particular line. Now that's going to be a subtotal, so I'll just label that style subtotal and hit enter. That's going to give me a new style. And I'll click OK. So now I've got it laid out how I want it, I believe. Just double check a couple items here. And the other thing I want to do is add a section around the line items. Not the total, but the line items. So I can format the section. And in the section properties, I want a thinking currency sign, which will start at the top of the section and move its way down to the first printed row. And I also want a smart underline, which starts at the bottom of the section and works its way up to the last printed row. And I'll just click OK to accept those properties. Now, in the form mode, I can go in, and I happen to know the map numbers I'm working with. So 100 is assets, and that's nicely centered. 110 is current assets. 111. Now, if I add an extra one, I just type over it, not a problem. And as you can see, very quickly, I've created a current asset section for my financial statement. Now, this is the get hide button, if you will, show skip text button. If I click on that, all the information that is currently being skipped goes away. And if I want a single year statement, I've added that checkbox. And if you recall, I did put the single equals one into the prior year column. And immediately, the current year column shifts over to the margin. And I can just check and uncheck that. So that's how I would go about building a table. Okay? And you can see that it's very flexible. I can even take this a step further. And if I wanted another table that was just like this, I could copy it and underneath that paste it. And then all I would have to do, because it is a different table, is go through and indicate the new map numbers that I want to work with. That's going to drive my descriptions and my balance.